Hello again. Uh, I'm here with a continuation of a problem that you have already seen in another video that relate, uh, relates to um, determining velocity of different points on a rod that is going through combination of translation and rotation using the IC method. So I make sure that I put uh, the link for that video actually uh, at the, uh, you know, at the end of this video so that you can go and see that video if you haven't seen it. So we have already done the velocity analysis. So here you're given velocity of uh, point A of this rod to be downward at six meters per second and ac actually accelerating at a rate of five meters per second per second squared at this instant. So remember, A is confined to move vertically down and B as a result has no choice but to move to the right like this. So velocity of B and acceleration of B are going to be in this direction. Now, of course, we know velocity of B, physically B is going to move to the right, but we don't know if it's going to accelerate or decelerate, actually, and we'll find out. So acceleration of B actually could be pointing to the left, and we'll determine that. So let me go ahead and erase this actually here. Uh, so you guys already know that we determined based on the instantaneous center that actually omega of this rod happens to be two radians per second. Again, I suggest you guys go back and see that video, which I'm going to give you the link at the end. Um, also, we determined velocity of B based on the instantaneous center to be actually eight uh, meters per second to the right. What we want to determine uh, for this problem is given acceleration of a now and remember we already determined omega based on the ic method we want to find actually the following we want to find acceleration of point b and the angular acceleration of the rod at this instant and remember that you're having the uh, the vertical distance being equal to four obviously since this is a five meters this would be a uh, the, the horizontal distance should be three meters then okay so um, the method we're going to use is the relative motion. Uh, even though there are other ways to do this, uh, the absolute motion is also another method. We're going to use relative motion. Relative motion means that you're going to use uh, the relative motion equation. In other words, you could say, if I want to find acceleration of B, I'm going to take acceleration of A, for which I already know uh, that is 5 meters per second uh, squared going down. And then I'm going to add to it acceleration of B relative to A. Now, this part is the translation part of the motion. So this means translation with, with A. And this part is the rotation part of the motion. This means rotation about A. And specifically, what it means, it means that you want to find acceleration of B as if A is fixed. And what we're going to do once we determine those, we're going to just plug in to this equation. Now, we have the option of doing this vectorially using the cross product uh, mostly, or we could do it a scalar. My intention um, is to just solve this problem in the scalar format for you, which I think is an easier approach. So let me start by showing you what is this acceleration of B relative to A. So acceleration of B relative to A, as I said, it means find acceleration of B as if A is fixed. I can actually show you right here on this picture. So we know A is not fixed, but what if A was fixed? So if I make A fixed, this point fixed, and say I want to find acceleration of B, there are two components in, so remember A is fixed, right? And now I want to find acceleration of B as if A is fixed. So in pure rotation, we know that acceleration has two components. There is a normal component like this toward the center of rotation and there is a tangential component. By the way, we know that this bar is rotating actually counterclockwise clearly. So omega is counterclockwise. Why don't we assume that also alpha is counterclockwise as well? So if alpha is counterclockwise, then the tangential component of acceleration of B is going to be also in the direction of assumed alpha. 
So now you see this acceleration of B relative to A, which is the rotation part of the motion, has two components. It has a normal component, right, which is pointing like that. And by the way, we know the slope. We know the slope of this guy is 4 over 3. And there is a tangential component, this guy, which also going in this direction. Since A sub T is going to be normal to the uh, normal acceleration, so the slope is going to be just the inverse, so 3 over 4. Okay, what are these components? Let's go ahead and determine them. A and as you know is r omega squared. R is the distance between A and B, which is the length of the bar. And omega is 2. Remember, omega was determined earlier. So remember, any acceleration analysis requires you to actually calculate the omega. Otherwise, you're going to have too many unknowns. So this becomes 20 meters per second squared with that direction that you see here, right? And then a sub t becomes r alpha. r again is 5 and alpha is unknown. And you know the direction here. So let me actually go back and rewrite this equation for you again. Acceleration of b equal acceleration of a plus acceleration of b relative to a. Right? So basically I'm just rewriting this equation right here. And now the scalar approach requires us to plug in the information that we have. So what do we know about acceleration of b? I don't know what acceleration of B is, but I'm going to assume that actually is going, we know B is physically moving to the right, so I'm going to assume that acceleration of B is also in the same direction as velocity. We know it's confined to move horizontally, and that's very important. Okay, what about acceleration of A? Look, it's 5 meters per second squared down. And what about acceleration of B relative to A? Here we are. It has a normal component of 20, which is pointing like this with a slope of 4 over 3, and a tangential component, which is 5 alpha, and is pointing just normal to that with a slope of 3 over 4. So at this point, all we have to do, remember, we have two unknowns now, this guy and this guy. And how do we solve for these unknowns? Very easily. All we have to do is to equate the horizontal and vertical component. So if you actually start with the vertical component and equate both sides, so if we assume this is the positive direction, or vertical. Notice that on the left-hand side, acceleration of B is horizontal. So we get a 0 here. We get a minus 5 here from this guy. We get a 20 times 4 fifth, because that's the uh, vertical component, and a 5 alpha times 3 fifth. If you go ahead and solve for alpha, alpha actually happens to be minus 11 over 3, which is minus 3.67, uh, actually, sorry. Negative means what? Negative indicates that actually the direction that we assume for alpha here is wrong. So alpha actually is 3.67 radians per second squared, but actually it's rotating clockwise. That implies that this bar physically is rotating counterclockwise, but actually is decelerating. So now, I unfortunately, I have to go to the next page, and I'm going to now equate the horizontal components. So let me go to the next page and equate the horizontal components. Remember, if you go back, horizontal component was acceleration of B. And then uh, we had, uh, let me see, zero from acceleration of A, 20 going in the negative direction times 3 fifths, and then a 5 alpha times 4 fifths. But remember, alpha came out to be negative 3.67. If you plug that in there and solve for acceleration of B, we end up getting also a negative answer, which also 26.7, which means acceleration of B is 26.7 meters per second squared, but going the other direction. Remember, velocity of B physically was 8 meters per second to the right, but that indicates that this is decelerating. So actually both the bar and point B at this instant, this bar alpha, remember, this is the, actually the wrong direction of alpha. So alpha should be the other way, right? And actually acceleration of B happens to be the other way too, even though physically velocity of B is to the right. So as I said, uh, I'm going to... Uh, let me go back and you can take a look at this again. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to uh, actually uh, 
in the uh, end of the YouTube or where I'm going to put the description of the video, I'm going to put the link to the previous um, uh, video, which uh, showed you how to how to determine omega using the instantaneous center approach. Again, I hope this was useful to you uh, in showing you how we can determine acceleration. Of course, this is a very simple example that I showed you, and I'll hopefully come back with more interesting examples later on. Again, thank you for watching and listening.